Hey yo guys, what's up man? It's your boy Rain TJ back again with another reaction video. And today, um, I'ma go over this like uh you know Spencer. We'll be going over Spencer once in a while, but um and I don't really do too many financial videos, but I don't wanna just focus on negativity all the time and like violence and Philly looting and shoot. What's my cat doing, bro? What are you doing? What do you yo, what's happening? I don't get it. Come here. All the way. Come on. All the way. Come on. I think he just want to play, gang. He he been asleep for a long time. You know how cats be after they get that five hour sleep. Anyways, though. Yeah, so I don't want to do just like, you know, violence, negativity, and all of that. So I want to go over this financial video, if you want to call it that, that Spencer is doing, talking about like how people spend their money, this and the third. Also, I'm also working on some videos for One Piece, like how to draw One Piece, because I'm getting closer to being monetized. And I keep telling you guys, once you help me get there, all I'm going to focus on is original art content. So I've been working on that for the past two, three days, and I'm meeting a few hiccups. But as soon as I figure the first one out, because I have three videos on how to draw um, the Straw Hat crew, right, from One Piece. The first one, I'm trying to put it up. I keep getting the copyright. And I get why. I mean, I thought I tweaked it enough, but I get why. And I don't want to dispute it just yet and waste time. So I'm, like, altering it. And we'll see if the altern the alter the alternate <laughs> will um be accepted. Actually, let me just check that mirror real quick. It's not fully uploaded. But yeah, if it's accepted, cool, we'll edit the rest. Boom. If not, I'll have to remove the sound and then go over the videos and like put a voiceover on it and then I'll upload it for you guys. But yeah, if you love my drawings, if you want to learn how to draw right now i am allowing memberships so or i am eligible to accept memberships so if you want to join my crew you know what i mean support subscribe like share however uh, i'll really appreciate it but let's get into today's video sorry for such a long intro i promised myself i wouldn't do that but once in a while it's okay Peterson struggling to pay down a loan after earning $100 million in his career. One thing sports fans struggle to understand is how easy it is for athletes to spend all of their money regardless of how much they earn. What's up, GQ? It's Marshawn Lattimore, and this is how I spent and saved my first million dollars. CBS Sports has Marshawn as the number 10 cornerback in the NFL. A nice young player out of Ohio State, Marshawn is set to earn a lot of money during the next offseason when the Saints will likely offer him a long-term extension. The Saints cap space is tight and they will be jumping through hoops to sign all of their young players. But even if the Saints can't find the money, a team in the NFL will hand Marshawn a large contract around $16 to $20 million per year. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, specifically 117th area. Real tough neighborhood, so you know, Really what we got is sports. Sports is really the way to make it out of there. I get bummed out when I hear athletes mention that the sports were their only way out of a certain neighborhood. The poverty cycle makes it really challenging for people who grow up in bad neighborhoods to break the cycle, earn a good income, and be able to live a prosperous life. James Wise is a main contributor on the Bigger Pockets forums and is a Cleveland real estate investor. He provided neighborhood grades for each zip code in Cleveland. Marshawn is from Glenville, zip code 44108. James labels this area Area as an F, war zone, wild west, empty houses get stripped of all valuables and sell for almost nothing. Lots of boarded up homes and blocks where many homes were torn down. Total loss is very common. James lists the median income for this zip code at $20,000 per year. In Marshawn's next contract, he'll make more money per snap than his old neighbors make per year. It's incredibly difficult for guys from these neighborhoods to manage money when they get it. How do you expect someone growing up around people earning $20,000 per year to know how 
how to manage money when they sign a contract that wires $9 million into their account on day one. Fortunately, some are able to find the right financial advisor who helps guide them to invest, but not all are so lucky. I was the best player like coming from Ohio. You know, I was supposed to play my freshman year, but I got hurt, so I was injured for the whole year that year. Then my second year, I was injured for most of the year. I almost quit and ate, you know, my family taught me in the stand. Marshawn was the number two player in Ohio out of high school and the number six cornerback in the country. I'm glad he decided not to quit football when he was experiencing hardship. Football is a brutal sport for all participants, and your career can end and will typically end much quicker than anticipated. Marshawn suffered a season-ending injury on the third day of preseason camp his freshman season. After recovering from surgery on his hamstring, he strained his other hamstring on the third day of camp his sophomore season. At a school like Ohio State, where getting buried on the depth chart is a probability after multiple injuries, Marshawn did the opposite. He emerged as a star his junior season and was selected 11th overall in the 2017 NFL Draft by the New Orleans Saints. Coming from where we come from, I can really take care of my family. I can take care of myself. But at the same time, you got to know that this money don't last forever. I'm guessing his injury sustained at Ohio State helped prepare him mentally for the possibility that any injury could end his career. Even as great as some players are, they are one injury away from possibly being cut and never seeing a huge contract. The NFL is ruthless, and many players aren't on guaranteed contracts, which means they're expendable at any moment. You can see the details of my rookie contract right here. Son. He signed for a four-year contract, $15.35 million. Receive an upfront of 9.31. Add that up, bro. 516336144. Boom, 24. That's 24.66 million, son. That's crazy, bro. Bro, 20. Bro, 30 people could work a whole lifetime, put their money together, and not make that, bro. But that's the kind of money we're trying to touch for real. Because he was a first round pick, Marshawn's four year contract is fully guaranteed, whereas if he were drafted in later rounds, some or none of his contract would be guaranteed. 15 million is good money, but it's not as much money as fans seem to think. The signing bonus arrives early, which can be dangerous because single payouts are not representative of future paychecks. True. Imagine getting half of your W 2 salary in January in one paycheck, and then the other half is spread out over the following 48 weeks. But check me out, though. Check me out, though. Imagine if that could cover your cost of living. That first half of your double two could cover your cost of living 300 times over. It's just for you to be mentally secure and mentally stable, emotionally stable, and have the good support around you and be wise enough to know that you should remain living in the same means yo bro this is my stress ball you have your own ball here what was i saying gang this guy always trying to fuck up my shit <laughs> give me my shit <laughs> go get yours um yeah it's all about how you Use that money for real. My pops always say, it's not how much you make, it's how much you save. And I'm going to tell you, it's not necessarily how much you save, it's how you invest. So, yeah, go, 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 go do that. Since he's played out the first four years of the deal, he's probably seen about 7.5 million of the 15 million earned. Marshawn will earn the fifth year option for next season that will bring in over $10 million and then be in line to earn an 80 to $100 million deal in the summer of 2022. Going with a financial advisor, you really just learn that they're trying to help you. You just got to take the knowledge in. You got to save your money like it's your last snap, like every time. We playing a physical sport, anything can happen. You got to have something to fall back on.
Um, I've noticed that multiple athletes on the GQ Sports How I Spent My First Million show have mentioned they hired a financial advisor. Because of the TV deals of the past 10 years, athletes make so much now that it's legitimately difficult to go broke, but it still can happen. I think what's actually happened though is the top of the food chain NFL guys are making more money than before, but the athletes who only play a couple of years and never sign the big contract are still just as likely to suffer financial trouble after their playing days are over. First thing I bought with my check is a car for my mother. Car for my mother, 35K. Okay. He didn't specify the car. Let's take a look at a 2020 BMW 2 Series as a reference. The MSRP for a basic model is around $35,000. In the history of human transportation, this is one of the nicest cars ever made. Basically, any new car in 2020 is one of the nicest vehicles ever created. I find it funny when people comment on my other videos saying the athlete should buy his mom the most expensive car she wants. To rookies, there's a legitimate difference between a $35,000 car and an $85,000 car on the wallet. You're right. And it's those kind of people who go broke, bro. It's those kind of, And that's a crazy thing. That's a crazy thing. The universe is just built in such a way that those are the kind of people who always come across money, like, somehow. You know what I mean? Like, the easiest way. Money just falls in their lap. And they always let it go so ridiculously easy bro i don't man i don't get it bro but i guess you know easy come easy go right even if a rookie is playing well, they should not be overextending their buying power on their rookie deal. Buying a $35,000 car is perfectly acceptable and your mom will still love you. Because let's be real, any modern car produced in 2020 has everything you'd ever need in a car. I really wanted, you know, the Rolls Royce, but people just kept talking me out of it. A few of my teammates, you know, all the guys that really know what's going on, they said, man, just, just wait. That's good. Not gonna buy a car until I can buy this car. The veterans in the locker room have probably seen too many athletes struggle financially. They hear the rookie talking about the Rolls Royce Wraith he wants to buy, and they tell him, no, 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 rookie, you buy that car when you get your second deal. Buying a Rolls Royce is such a waste of money unless you can buy four. Mm -hmm. Here's some random data from an auto news article I found. For example, the average Rolls Royce family has 20 vehicles, a vehicle for every mood. The average net worth of a Rolls Royce owner is $14.4 million in the United States. This article was written in April 2000, but the data is probably pretty similar today. Point being that you don't buy one of these super exotic vehicles right when you can afford one. You wait until you have the means to buy 20. So I actually like rented Vom's Benz. I was paying this car now and I was just driving this car. Rubbing around 10. I'll say 10. What's that? I definitely approve of only spending $10,000 on a car. Materialism runs this country and it's never more apparent than when someone starts earning a little more money and immediately starts buying expensive vehicles. I've never understood why rookie professional athletes purchase expensive cars. Marshawn did it the right way. Drive a used Mercedes for a year or two and only spend $10,000 per year on a car. Most Americans don't realize that what they pay for in most luxury products is marketing and advertising. They aren't paying for a better product. This is why I'm such an advocate for not spending ridiculous amounts of money on consumer goods. You can get the same quality for a huge discount if you don't care about brand names. After my first year, I actually did get a car and I got a Range Rover. At least for the Range Rover, about 60K. I leased the car because I really didn't. I didn't want it. I've never understood why people buy the mid-range luxury vehicle. Mercedes, Lexus, Range Rover, Maserati. These cars don't get you laid. They don't get you paid. They don't help you make friends. And they don't have the performance that makes a friend want to go for a test drive. Maybe you can help me out in the comment section, but I personally don't see any difference between a new $35,000 generic mid-size vehicle and a $60,000 Range Rover. Brand perception is what drives the value. I got some chains and I got some bracelets. The bracelets is 15. I actually just got these chains, 40. All together, probably like about 120K on chains and bracelets. That's a good fit.
I really struggle to understand why celebrities and famous athletes wear jewelry, especially $120,000 worth. Jewelry serves two reasons. One is to exemplify social status and access to resources through signal theory, mm -hmm. and two is to bring attention to yourself. I personally wouldn't want anyone recognizing me in public if I were a famous athlete with money. You become a target. Mm -hmm. What we consume and what we wear send signals to the public about who we are. The book Spent Sex Evolution and Consumer Behavior by Dr. Jeffrey Miller does a great job explaining this concept of signal theory. To break the concept down from this example, expensive jewelry is an honest signal that the owner of the jewelry has access to enough resources that they can essentially waste significant amounts of money on jewelry that brings no value to them. This is a mating strategy as having access to resources is one of the most important qualities that a man can have. Expensive jewelry is a signal to the market that the wearer has so many resources that spending 120,000 on chains and 25,000 on a Rolex isn't damaging to their wallet. It's not a coincidence that men wear their jewelry when they're going to a nightclub, are on a date, or going to a public venue where single women may be present. True. I personally find jewelry to be a silly concept. I couldn't tell the difference between $10 watches at Walmart and Marshawn's $145,000 collection because I just don't value jewelry in any way. My theory is that most young men go through a prove it stage where they feel the need to wear their wealth. You're I think right. fake gurus deal with this too as they need to prove to you how great of a entrepreneur they are in every single Instagram post. How people spend their money is totally up to them. If Marshawn wants to buy $145,000 worth of jewelry, then he should. But $145,000 today would be worth about $1.5 million by the time he's 55 years old if he invested it in the stock market. This conversation only exists because of how many young athletes face financial trouble but within a few years after their plan. For real, for real. By the time he's 55 years old, what's 1.5 million? If inflation and all that going up like that, you feel me? Son, what you trying to do? Yo. I think there's something flying around bothering him or something. One moment, gang. Plain days. I got my own style, you know. I know how to put stuff together. So I, I bought my own stuff. I spent a lot of money on clothes and shoes. I'm gonna say 80. So that's down a little bit. Say 80. I want to know how you can spend $80,000 on clothing. Oh, you can buy nice suits for $1,000 each, nice shoes for $150 each, and a huge wardrobe full of nice clothing for about five grand. What most young men don't realize is that fit matters more than brand. The key with purchasing suits is buying fit. A well-fitted suit that costs $1,000 looks as expensive as any suit that costs much more. Most people can't tell the difference between a moderately priced suit and one that costs significantly more. To me, there's no difference between $5,000 of expensive clothing and $80,000 of expensive clothing. For real, for real, you could get some fitted suits, like 350 for the top, you know? You could get the pants for like one, two, 152. That bring you to like six already. Like, that's real low, bro. You could get suits like that. And then, you know, you got the undershirts, the tie that come with it. If you're really trying to get the whole fit, you get the shoes. That bring you up to 1K, like he said. But, bro, you could get, you could just throw on shirts that you already have. Let's be real. Anybody 21 to 30 years old already, you gotta, bro. If you don't, something wrong with you. But you already gotta have some sort of colored, you know, church shirt, office shirt, formal shirt, you know what I mean? And just throw your new, your new top over that your your new pants your new tie your you know what i mean and you could look you could look like you wearing something that costs 3k to a lot of you watching, these decisions may not seem important. Spencer, let him spend his money. Spencer, he's going to make so much money, it won't matter. It's the habit of spending money on conspicuous consumption that gets these guys in trouble. I like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, like expensive stuff, Dior. But I, you know, I, see, I got a diggy outfit on right now. One thing I find interesting about American consumerism is how much marketing and advertising plays into consumers' minds. I've never desired to own some name brand of clothing. To me, the idea of 
high-end fashion or name brand clothing is all for other people to notice what you wear. I see that as a form of mental prison where you're only trying to wear clothing for others to appreciate. Remember, the value of name brands is in others recognizing the brand and knowing the cost. Tim Duncan shopping at Old Navy is one of my favorite pictures from a professional athlete. They kind of tricked me into doing it. We went to a steakhouse and they just told you like, just come on, just come. And I didn't even know I was paying for it like that. They ran the bill, like, it was like 7,000. But I was mad, like, I was mad. At that. I didn't want to spend 7,000 on a dinner. No, I love them, I love them right now. So it's all good, it's just funny now. Ricky Dinner, 7K. <laughs> What's really challenging for young professional athletes is they share a locker room with guys at the top of the food chain financially. Let's say you earn $50,000 per year and all of your best friends are making $500,000 per year. It's going to be challenging to spend time with them and not spend money like they do. Athletes face the same problem just on a much larger scale. I got my sister a car too. Yeah, she messed her car up. You know, she got kids, so I, you know, I couldn't have her out here without a car. I got her a Jeep Rubicon. Uh, 60K for my sister car. Out of everything he said so far, this was one of the like, I mean, once again, your money, dog. You could do whatever. But if it was me personally, I wouldn't get my sister a car twice more expensive than the car I get my mother. And if my reason is she has kids, I'm not getting her a Jeep like that, bro. I'm not doing that, bro. That's not a... Nah, bro. I'm gonna get her a normal family car, you feel me? Like, not, not no G-Class, no stunting out here type. Bro, she gotta, she gotta maintain that too, you know? You know what I mean? Like, she gotta keep that pumping. Somebody gotta... Pay the car note, or if you buy it cash, somebody got to pay the gas. Somebody got to do all that, son. So, no, I wouldn't get my sister a G-Class. That's twice as expensive as the car I get my mother. Nah, I wouldn't. That's just me, though. How guys like Marshawn spend money on their family is their business, but I do think the smarter play is to buy a nice new car for thirty thousand and picture? leave the remaining amount, in this case thirty thousand. Because if that's the picture, that ain't no G class. That's just a normal Jeep. But still, is that a four door? I can't even tell. It looked like it right here. It looked like it right here, but you can't tell here. But it could be. It could be. I mean, this is okay though. This is okay though. I thought I thought it was the one that was showing off like some G class shit, but no. Nah, like I mean, this is okay. I don't even know the cost of this, but he says sixty k and your mom's car was thirty. I mean, it kind of makes sense too, gang, because what your mom's really driving around, you know. So maybe in that regard, but I don't know their circumstance. But in my circumstance. I don't have a sister for my brother. I wouldn't get a, my brother a car twice as expensive as the one I get my mother. That's my circumstance. Is to buy a nice new car for 30,000 and leave the remaining amount, in this case 30,000, for reserves. Mm -hmm. Given the neighborhood he comes from and the fact that his sister has kids, I think putting money in reserves to make sure his family is taken care of is a better use of money yeah. than a nicer car. We don't you can still buy a perfectly nice and safe car with plenty of room for the kids for under $30,000. I bought my mother a house. We was in the hood, so we just had to get out of there. She was good. The first nice house that she wanted, like she felt like that fit her. I just like go ahead, you can get it. House for my mother, five hundred thousand. It's admirable that athletes purchase homes for their family members, but I still think spending half a million on a house is probably a little too risky yeah. for an athlete on his rookie contract. If he bought a house in his home city of Cleveland, the yearly tax bill could be as high as $12,000 per year for a half million dollar house. It doesn't sound like much when Marshawn makes millions, but it becomes a burden if football doesn't pan out or if the athlete is struggling with money. The good thing about real estate is if he purchased a nice property in a nice neighborhood, it's 
likely that he could sell the house reasonably quickly to get his money back if he ever got tight on finances. Real estate is illiquid, but it can be liquid within 90 days given the right circumstances. Last thing I did, I gave money out to my family. Taking care of family isn't cheap, so 100000 in family expenses. I would love to find out how much money each athlete in the NFL gives out to family members. I think they should provide for their families. That's why you work hard to earn millions. I am curious how charitable these athletes are with family members, though. Remember but then again, too, gang. I always, I always thought about that, too. Like, what I would do, you know, give up money, whatever, whatever. But I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. You give some people money and they just throw it away. You feel me? But if you give them a business, like you go buy the car wash down the street, put a little money in it, build it up. Hey, run this business, get a monthly salary, quit your job. You know, that's something different, but just, hey, here's 50K. Just put it in their hand. Bro, they go put that in somebody else's hand just as easy. You feel me? And now they right back to square one. Or they go buy something that they can't afford, can't maintain, and now they're in the red. Or deeper in the red. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I personally, I think I'll be looking at like, you know, yeah, bro, I'm going to buy the gas station. I'm going to buy the car lot. I'm going to buy definitely, definitely the car lot. You know what I mean? Live near a city, a car park. Woo, run it up. What? You want to do some franchises? You want to join Starbucks? You want to join who? Pizza Hut? Let me know. And we run it up that way. Oh, you want to cook? You want to open a new cuisine spot down the road? Yeah, we could do that, but... Here, I'm just put some money in your hand. Nah, I ain't feeling that one. Remember, these numbers are what the athlete give us. I wouldn't doubt that the numbers in this series aren't accurate. Guys like Evander Kane seem fine on social media and on the ice, but it takes a public lawsuit to find out that he's got a gambling problem, took out loans to invest in businesses, and he is filing for bankruptcy. He doesn't exactly share that publicly. I know these reaction videos can look like I'm being too critical, but there's still too many athletes going broke even after earning millions. It's too easy to spend their money, and I don't think the NFL does a good enough job helping these young guys out. I've been become friends with a guy at my gym who played on a Super Bowl team and we talked about this and he made it clear that there isn't much help both in the organization and from the league. Plenty of lottery winners end up broke, dead, or miserable. Receiving a bunch of money sounds great but it isn't great for everyone. The hedonic treadmill is real and you get accustomed to having money really quickly. And if you spend money like it's infinite then you'll end up as another headline as a famous athlete having financial troubles. Marshawn is about to get paid. Let's hope he invests his money so his family will be set for life thank you so much for watching all right thank you gang comment down below if you if you like this kind of video these kind of you know reactions um i have more drawings and stuff coming i actually got a email while doing this i gotta redo that video for that one piece drawing that i really want to show you guys so i'm gonna work on that right now and i'm gonna see y'all in the next one all right bye everybody